Hey, good morning and welcome to our devotionals in the book of Exodus. We have moved into chapter 13 now. Verses 1 and 2 will be our reading today. Let's read it and then we'll think about it just for a minute together. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify to me every firstborn, the first offspring of every womb among the sons of Israel, both of man and beast. It belongs to me. So we're just going to take those two verses this morning. So we might wonder what these two things are have in common with each other. You know, the firstborn and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So the consecration of the firstborn, these two things, they both are, one thing they have in common, they're both spring things. They're both, this is a spring feast and this, uh, the firstborn, the coming of the firstborn is usually in the spring. In animal husbandry, the new animals are born often in the spring. And a second piece that puts these two ideas together, and perhaps this is why the Holy Spirit led them to be together in the mind of Moses, they also have, both of these things have a lot to do with the group of people settling into the promised land. Okay? So Moses shares them together right here. Now here's another point of special interest. The father and the firstborn in the family both shared a special interest in the leadership of the family. For example, at the Passover meal or the Feast of Unleavened Bread at that meal at the seventh day, when that happens, there's a special dialogue that takes place between the father and the firstborn son as they're retelling the story of the, the Passover, the night in Egypt when the Lord passed over the, the homes of the faithful and then delivered them from Egypt. So that story is retold at each of these occasions, and the firstborn and the father have this back and forth dialogue. So this is another piece that sort of goes together here. That there, you know, we're in a time, a culture where every distinction, every role is, is to be ignored and avoided, and where everything is all equal. Yeah, but you know what, if you sat down, uh, husbands, if you sit down and arm wrestle your wife, that might not turn out too equally. You will probably win, although these days, that's an interesting question. But it should be that there are distinct roles. Women excel in this and that, men excel in this and that, and so God designed us that way. And even in the home, the firstborn son, the, the leadership responsibility, if the father dies, a lot of the leadership responsibility shifts to the firstborn son. Remember, we're not talking uh, 20, the 2020s here, we're talking, you know, go back, you know, thousand and more years before Christ. So as we look at that, we're looking at a little bit, some different pieces, and in some ways, some healthy things that we have lost. Now, it's pretty hard for us to conceptualize something like this uh, in our day when families, uh, many families, seldom even eat together, or if they eat together, they're all sitting at the table together in silence. They're not having any conversation. They're just, uh, they've got their fork in one hand and they're surfing on the phone with the other hand. And we're kind of in, a, in a, a time with a lot of brokenness and a lot of aloneness and separation. There's a lot of reasons for that. Some of it, I think, is engineered and some of it's just a consequence of the different developments in our time. But the family uh, here needs to stay together. And so the Passover meal and then the Feast of Unleavened Bread and on the seventh day here, the focus in chapter 13 is really on the that and on the, the what happens on the seventh day, the final day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That uh, there's a lot of family roles and family things and the story being passed on, the important story, which is the foundation of the, the nation of God's people. So yes, our culture would laugh at the idea today, our culture would laugh at the idea of the husband being a protector at the, or the being the provider. Uh, yeah, I would laugh, laugh at that, but this is a very real thing and it's part of, part of what God designed and uh, the different roles. One's not better or worse than the other, they're just different. And so they all have their part. And so yes, the Lord says, I the firstborn son is consecrated to me because I passed over the firstborn uh, when I delivered my people in Egypt. So there's kind of an, an organic connection here that is unbreakable, it really can't be adjusted. God designed it this way. And God intends that, that it will be remembered year by year uh, by, the, by the Hebrew people as they move out of Egypt into the promised land 
and as they continue to observe this, to remind them of where they've come from. A lot of our problems today uh, come from forgetting where we've come from. We don't know who we are, and so we've, we are malleable, we're being reshaped by forces and things around us into things that we haven't even thought of. And there's a lot of stuff in our world today in the 2020s which uh, are, are really reshaping us in ways that are just absolutely destructive. So finding in God's word, uh, some of the original plan, going back to, to God's blueprint is a very important piece. And so we get this chapter 13, which is going to talk to us a lot about the consecration of the firstborn and this Feast of Unleavened Bread and its culmination on the seventh day of that feast. Our age today is, is anti-holy. You know, both nothing is sacred and everything is sacred, which means that works out to nothing is sacred. But our God has demands upon us, different roles in the family, different roles that he has set up and things that should be fulfilled and will bring happiness and joy to every member, every participant in the family. All right, we'll see you tomorrow morning.